really good game on a signature champion. So we'll see if the Koo Tigers switch it up a little bit in terms of what they prioritize for ban specifically. As we discussed, Graga should be up there. Well, we'll see what Najin kicks it off with. Azir, yeah, might as well just throw that down. The Koo Tigers will not feel too compelled to ban that themselves yet. And there you go, Callista as well. That is a champion that OQ has been very strong on and they will not hesitate to pick it at all first. And there's the Cassiopeia, so mimicking the bans from last time, but what is the last ban going to be from Najin? Now they don't have to take away that Callista any longer. Wouldn't surprise me for them to maybe take out the Rek'Sai here. They're not going to first pick it. Yeah. But of course, that depends a lot on whether that Gragas ban will come through. So it looks like the Koo Tigers kind of want to wait it on. Wow, Oku's Vein draws a ban. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Actually not sure about that one. <laughs> I, I don't think that was really the core of that composition. And there is Lulu. No longer going to be available, of course. Uh, three players on the Tigers have shown very good proficiency on that Lulu pickup, even though not too common in the top lane anymore. And LeBlanc not going to be available. So the Gragas is up. Uh, All right. you, you would think that they would take it here. Uh, Nar and Zed both slipped through this time as the Tigers make a few adaptations, but they're going to have that last pick. So they may not be too worried about the mid lane from the red side perspective. And, wow. That would be a very interesting first pick here. They did take it in the first round of the draft and Nautilus priority. Okay, they really want that. And that does open up the Gragas for Wisdom. I'd expect him to take it, uh, not just to take it away from Watch, but again, it is kind of that number one priority for a lot of junglers and you get to take it away from Watch, so why not? And the Nautilus pickup, yes, that has been very powerful for Gorilla in the past, but and uh, Duke certainly did really well on it in the top lane in the last game. However, uh, I think that Duke has a massive champion pool and a lot of options. So it does surprise me just a little bit that they would be so heavily invested in that Nautilus pick as opposed to the Gragas. We'll see if it works for them and what Najin's plan is going to be. They could take that early Sivir, but that will probably prompt another Lucian pick from Prey. Yeah, Prey was cut out a little bit, but of course a lot of that also caused by explosive cast. And once the Gragas taken, uh, Rek'Sai pretty much the next up for a lot of junglers, unless you have a specific plan with something like Sejuani or Nunu. And so where is this Nautilus going to go? Right now, they've got a very heavy engage composition from Najin. They're going to be able to utilize that speed to catch out their opponents once again. Tigers have an opportunity to go for perhaps some disengage here. Could go for something like Corky Janna to set up some more siege. Or they could go with Jinx and get caught. Mm. <laughs> mm. And get jinxed on their own. Well, uh, yeah, Corky seems a lot more plausible, especially also Prey. Uh, has been known for his Corky for a long time alongside his Ezreal. Uh, but Prey definitely has adapted time to time from meta to meta. Now the Tigers could do something here, like play double AD. Uh, oh, or early Cassidy. Okay. Uh, leaving their support pick for last. Does seem, I, it does seem a little bit pressure, doesn't it? Trying to take it away from Goon, perhaps? Because otherwise I don't see a strong party and having to pick that first when you have last pick. Yeah, dangerous too, I think to a certain degree that there may be a Zed coming in here. Ari could be picked up again uh, as well. And you could do, I mean, Kastan obviously will do better in the lane against the Ari. But a lot of pressure could be coming in, especially the, the chain CC of the charm into knockup or vice versa. And it will be Maokai and Ari to round it out. So really, it, great movement and engage from the Najin composition, able to create those picks. And with how decisive they were in those engagements in the last game, I think this is a composition that they're going to be quite comfortable with. Yeah, and even just with one depth charge, I mean, that champion is out of the fight for the first three or five seconds, depending on how far you have to move out. So not quite sure how well that's gonna work for Kuro or Prey. And so then they're gonna pick up the Morgana for some extra lane pressure and also for that black shield, which is gonna help a lot with these hard initiates from Najin and Fire. So the question is, is 
is this Ku Tiger team actually going to lane swap here and try and get some Morgana roams down early alongside the Gragas and try and get Corky into that level six position where he's going to be pretty punishing in terms of his sieging capabilities. Um, but they don't have a lot of follow-up siege or early wave clear either, which is a, a kind of a concern actually. Yeah especially against the likes of Sivir and Ari, who are going to be able to show up lanes really well. Maokai also doesn't do too bad. Of course, a Gorilla will be able to help a little bit alongside Wisdom with their wave clear, but it's not like they're going to prioritize building strong AP at the start. Well, they just have great, they just have great ability to deal with this Cassidy in this particular matchup. They've got so much crowd control, and they have two forms of point and click crowd control in the uh, twisted Advance and the Depth Charge. So I'm not really sure if Kuro's actually going to be able to do anything because it's going to be very easy for to lock him down, especially if he goes into the last into the back line. And Sivir is going to be able to spell shield at least one of Cassidy's abilities and then just get Miss Cassidy will be locked down. So I'm a bit concerned. Well, the runners up, Ku Tigers, will be able to bring this to a series. that second game of this match between Najin and Fire and the Ku Tigers. So if Najin wins here, we are actually well on our way to making Anarchy number one by the transitive property. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the old transitive property, <laughs> the high points of analysis. <laughs> I love it, I love it myself. So, uh, pure in the tri brush right there, looks like a Foss Bomb from Prey went in. And uh, Tiger's really kind of going back to their roots where they were so successful earlier in the season. Of course, that Corky and Nar really courted their compositions when they were on that massive win streak at the beginning of spring. And it's something that they're going to be comfortable playing around. Going back on his Ari here, just hanging out in the mid lane for the moment. And it's interesting, because this will be, be a lot about roaming, both of these mid laners with a lot of movement to end up in some of these side lanes if they so choose. And it will be a lane swap coming in actually from Najin here. Uh, all right. Well, uh, like you said, I mean, in that mid lane, of course, with Goong having a little bit more wave clear. We'll see if he can take advantage of that. Uh, even post six, level six. We're just going to see a jungle follow from Smet, possibly. Uh, or just helping with that and then having to go back to lane. But that could end up dangerous, depending on the timing. Uh, it may depend here who gets a pretty good roam. Pure is actually waiting right there in the red buff. Looks like he hasn't been noticed uh, yeah, yet. Yeah, I don't think so. This is... Oh. oh, no smite for Wisdom. Meanwhile, Gorilla Burning is Ignite quite early there. Pure having the same idea. They haven't checked that brush yet. And he's, oh, oh. he tried to get the steal really close. Uh, watch has been taken down a little bit, but with Rek'Sai sustain, that's not going to be the biggest deal. But he does get some early damage. We'll see if that will actually force a quick recall. Gorilla now looking for an angle, but that is a later trinket ward inside the river. So he's gonna be spotted immediately. Both supports heading back down to be with their 80 carries. At least for a little bit. Freeze coming in here for prey. Should be the same thing happening up in the top lane. All right. And indeed it is, so. So we're all back to a quiet level two. Duke had to tank a lot of that. They gave the blue buff over to Duke, however, which is great for breaking lane freezes on this Maokai. It's one of the big advantages that you can have with a Maokai in the lane swap. If you choose to give the blue buff over, he can just go down there and really safely farm with saplings and use that AOE to reverse the, reverse the wave. Gorilla is sticking around, however, in the bottom lane. And is he going to finish that recall? There's the TP, and he is going to recall right. into the top side. So they're not going to be trying to put pressure on the dragon early, instead focusing on getting this Gnar an advantage 
or at least some farm in the laning phase, but this should be pretty good for Najin just because of that blue buff and the fact that Prey's gonna have to take some minion damage right there just to attempt to freeze. Yes. Smeb TPing up, he does have some backup, but they're a little far out right now. Yeah, Smeb has flash, but he has to watch out. He gets dragged in by the dredge lane, gets stunned by the passive from Nanos and an early ignite coming in and the boomerang blade. Smeb completely zoned out and will have to go back home to heal up without any teleport to get back into lane. That was a bit greedy from the Tigers. They were delaying right there, just trying to uh, get some more farm in the jungle instead of heading directly over. And Smeb didn't realize that Pura was lurking in that brush, just waiting for the chance to strike. Nearly has to pay for it with a summoner. And look at the CS difference opening up right now between Smeb and Duke. This is a really good situation for Najin. And now, well, Nala is still going to stay topside. This is pretty bold. Yeah, just trying to punish Smeb as much as possible. Now we do have Wisdom and Gorilla a little bit closer this time. Maybe they went in for a deep ward. They're not going to spot it, but there's a dredge line again, and Smeb takes another boomerang blade, but a bigger minion wave this time in favor of the Koo Tigers, and there's a dark biting. Oh, uh, nice, nice spell shield from OQ. Yeah, really on top of that one. Didn't have the vision there, just saw it, and reacted appropriately with that spell shield. Gorilla is just here to give Gnar a little bit of cover, and Corky still farming under his turret right there. Looks like Duke has succeeded in reversing the minion wave. Meanwhile, Tiger's still working to that end as Smeb sidesteps one of these boomerang blades. And yeah, there's, it's gonna be a little bit. Still trying to just farm from range. However, he is a level down and nearly 20 CS at six minutes into this game. Yeah, it's pretty rough right now for Smeb. It's gonna take a long time for him to get his footing again. And so Gorilla's gonna have to stick with him for a little bit and then back off when he deems it safe enough. But, I mean, at this point, Smep can't get close to the minion wave until he has a big minion wave for himself to kind of hide behind from the skill shots of Nautilus. Yeah, Gorilla just making, poking out on the map a little bit right now while he can. He sees the minion wave, will eventually go back towards Smeb. So get some vision down, see if he can keep some eyes on the map so that nothing Untoward happens to his mid laner. Lots of wards around mid. Two pinks already to help Kuro out here safely farm. As he looks to get to level six, Kuro goes back for the catalyst. Uh, he's got to be really careful. He's trying to play up. He is six now, so a lot of that danger should be relatively mitigated. And Watch isn't going to be able to find much of anything in that situation. All right, both. Remember, or both players on the bottom side of the map will go back home to get some new items, Prey and Duke. Oh, but Duke's doing very well for himself, so he's just gonna go in and pick up a lot more basic stats. It's two levels up now. This is a really huge difference that happened just because Pure was hiding in that brush and the Tigers didn't respect the fact that the support could have been in that lane. And this is another issue where we saw that the Tigers not really respecting where Watch was on the map in the last game, and they made a bit of a greedy play and were really, really deeply punished for it. Gotta respect the dude potential. Yeah, the dude potential is... Go back to the basics. <laughs> All right. So we might start to see some differences here in mid lane starting from this point on. Both players having their ultimates, and we'll see if one of them wants to make a move for a roam. Or quite possibly maybe Goon going for a gank in the top side. Nar still being pretty weak and behind. Yeah, you see Duke just coming up there. Only boots right now for Smeb. So he's going to have a really hard time dealing with this Maokai. Already having to go back again as Duke continues to relentlessly push this wave into the tower. And there is Wisdom. Gets his Raptor buff triggered. And clears out the ward. TP used by Smeb. TP advantage for Duke right now. They're in a good situation. Prey is level 6, so... He'll be able to do a little bit more work up against this Sivir and trade from long range, taking that Sheen just for the burst damage. Duke also teleporting back up to top lane, wants to keep that pressure up against Smev. Smev did just hit level six though. So he'll have his ultimate if he gets into a, kind of an ult trade once he turns into Meganar. Yeah, no completed Hex Drinker yet. Duke 
already Sorry. finishing that catalyst, so he's going to be pretty safe in this situation. The ranged auto attack from Nar not going to be too punishing. With it, all that sustain that he has, Kuro quickly clearing out that wave, trying to deny Goong some CS while he goes over to take the blue buff. Meanwhile, Dragon being soloed right now by Wisdom. Yeah, should be pretty safe. Don't see much movement from elsewhere. Watch does come in with a Void Rush, and he's going to see it with the Tremor Sense. Yeah, he's going to put some pokes really down. Not a whole lot they can do right now. Oh, oh they actually got, actually cuts they off. They got the angle, Prey. so they're going to have to drop the Dragon now. So Prey wow. doesn't get over in time and has to use his Valk over the wall. So good stop, good... Yeah, very good stop there by Najin. And watch using that Void Rush to get the presence on that side of the map. And unfortunately for the Tigers, they couldn't get enough members of their team into the river to finish up that Dragon World. It looked really good for them at first, especially since Kuro was already there. Not enough committal from the Tigers members. Yep, so watch is going to take that time to get the Rift Scuttler on the bottom side, and now they'll have better eyes on Dragon. Goon and Kuro trying to go for a trade, but Kuro taking good advantage of his shield with magic damage uh, off of his Nova Sphere. He just has such huge sustain right now. There's not a whole lot that this Ari is going to be able to do without a little bit of help in terms of those trades, like you said, with the shield and then, of course, the catalyst and the Flask coming in as well. Should be healed up relatively quickly. Any damage that is incurred, but still a 20 CS lead, Smeb. Oh, and Kuro goes in onto Goong, and here comes Wisdom Cant. Nope, not going to find an angle with an explosive casting. Spirit Rush for Goong, and Goong trying to come back in to try to even out the trade. But Kuro doesn't mind too much. Should probably be going back home, I'd assume. Uh, or he's going to hide. Yeah, he does have a health pod, so he's just going to hide to assess the situation. Dredge lane not going to hit on Dupre. He All did right, have Black maybe, Shield. Nope, not another gank in the mid lane. Watch going into the bottom side instead. Oh, but Wisdom still here. Explosive cast still here, but Watch going to show up first to kind of just mitigate that threat from Kuro and Wisdom. Yeah, they don't want to go all in on that. Goon at full HP right now. Kuro still struggling a little bit down at under 50%. So not a good fight to take in that 2v2, at least for the moment. Kuro still healing up with some of these potions and trying to dodge those skill shots in the interim. Wisdom is here once again. He was just seen, however. Watch has a ward right over there. So they know exactly where Gragas is. Ping's going down. Grand Gorilla looking to recall. So a lot of mid lane focus this time. Both teams really wanting to make a play right there, but Najin having to play a bit more defensively while Spirit Rush was down, but just making sure that Goon doesn't get ganked. And that was some nice attention paid there by Pure and by Watch. And now they're just going to go ahead and auto this turret. Gorilla walks up, uh, W the wave. And push him back. Got some really nice damage down on the tower, though. A few autos. And they had so many wards on the bottom side, they'll be able to easily walk in that direction again. With very little fear. Corky just farming up under the turret, looking for that Trinity Force to as fast as he can. Still wards around, a lot of wards around this dragon for Najin. Smeb has TP, but he dot Meganar. This yeah. is a bit risky. Duke also has his TP, and of course, he has no concern about timings such as Meganar and Rage. So, Ku Tiger is still going to start yeah. that dragon. And Ari's not there, so they actually can't take this safely. From the Dodge and Fire team. And an early dragon for the Ku Tigers. Pretty early, uh, pretty early Rod of Ages, too. About a minute early for Kuro. Been doing a good job of farming up as best he can in this lane. So he'll start stacking that up very quickly right now. Pure still haunting the mid lane. <laughs> yeah, so everything else has been pretty quiet except for the mid lane as Goon continues to pressure this tier one. Yeah, but look at the coverage that they have. So they just took out, Dodge just took out the pink ward in the river. So they had three people in the river just so Goon would be safe in terms of pushing up. They want to try and trade that dragon for a lot of damage down on that tower, and it's nearly dead already pretty quickly into this game. We're dead even in terms of gold, but dragon may be traded for that cash grab on the tower early on. Gorilla yeah, going spotted. to back off, and Oku using that 
orb to make sure that there wasn't a jungler in there. Yeah, Kuro takes some damage from the charm connect and the orb from Goom. And Wisdom after that is just going to back off for now, get some extra vision in the enemy jungle, trying to set up the same thing for Kuro as Najin did for Goom. Gorilla showing up mid lane for some backup against Goom. Yeah, this game has been really interesting so far, just from the vision perspective, because both teams are really fighting over the mid lane at the moment to see if they can actually pull off anything against these assassin champions that both teams are running, but to no avail, mostly the top side taken over by the Tigers. They snuck in there and grabbed a dragon, but tons of wards on bottom for Najin, which make it dangerous for Prey and Gorilla, and uh -oh. this is... We do have Death Charge prepared for Pure, but we're gonna see a port back from Pure. They're not finding that angle as the wave kind of stabilizes a little bit towards the side of the Ku Tigers. Now Wisdom successfully also stole that blue buff away from Najin, so Goog's not gonna have that liberty while Kuro will continue to be able to just do as he wishes in lane with his skills. That was a bit of a missed opportunity from Najin right there. They could have actually tried to contest that blue buff just a little bit. Uh, yeah, Kuro sees that advantage going in for a trade. Well, he's just trying to make sure. Uh oh, yeah, oh. Well, here comes Wisdom. There's a Spirit Rush and Explosive Cast. Not going to connect in time as Goog's Spirit Rush is right as the barrel flies over to him. Really questionable flash from Wisdom. It's going to be extremely hard to catch that Ari if you don't knock her back in the first go. So, Spirit Rush, not an easy ability to track down with this Gragas. And so, that's a summoner spell that could be pretty important later on, but at least they relieve some of that pressure. The mid lane shouldn't be going down on the next wave. Wisdom can always go there and try and push out the wave if he wants. Instead, he's sending back into his own jungle for the time being. Goong has no more ultimate, so he's not going to be able to play quite so far forward anymore. And you can see, too, Kuro has pink wards on both sides of him to make sure no one's going to be coming from behind. Yeah, playing really safe. Uh from both teams really towards that mid lane. Let's see if we see that same support come back for Najin uh, with that Spirit Rush down, as you mentioned. I mean, Ari's such an interesting, interesting champion in that she's so heavily ult dependent in what she can do. Yeah, indeed. I, I like those pink board positions too because it's preventing Goom from playing too far forward in case Wisdom is standing there waiting to punish him. So by denying vision in those areas, it's gonna make Goom a lot more uncomfortable than he otherwise would be when they're trying to kill this turret. So that's a good adaptation here from Ku, just to go ahead and make Goong as nervous as they can. Explosive cast ready for Wisdom once again, but nowhere near ready for a gank. Anywhere on the map, he is coming back from base. Meanwhile, Smeb has been able to catch up in terms of CS numbers compared to Duke. Yeah, that gap has been closing, which is Quite good for him, but he hasn't been able to punish Maokai yet with this ranged auto attack. Here we go. Pure, oh, he's going to hit the dredge line, but Black Shield in time from Gorilla will keep Prey safe. Wash is going to try to poke down some damage as Wisdom comes for another ward near the mid lane, trying to keep Kuro really safe and give him peace of mind as Wisdom keeps Watch out of, of his own jungle. Yeah, lots of wards going down right now. Mid until Dragon, both teams really wanting to take this one out. Smeb keeps repeatedly farming the Krugs just to start dealing with that CS, but Duke at the same time goes and gets Gromp. This series in particular, we've seen so much jungling from the top laners, Indeed. even in these solo lanes, so. Yeah, thanks to those Krugs, Smeb doing quite well for himself now in terms of CS. Nothing to be too jealous about compared to Duke. Yeah, less than 100 gold down now. So the crisis was averted. And it wasn't actually able to be translated into a more permanent advantage. And these teams are just so close right now. There is Ari taking down that turret. Brings us back to about dead even in gold in spite of the slight CS advantage for Prey in the bottom side. No kills yet in this game. Mid tower going down before a kill. It's not something you see very often. Yeah, not these days at least. Uh, but Goong did do a good job early on bringing that down so low, trying to punish the Ku Tigers for their decisions. And finally, it pays off right before the Dragon spawns too. So Dragon up in five. Goong is going to go home. 
to finish an item before coming back. Spirit Rush is available for that Ari. And level two boots for Goom as he returns. Smab really fast tracking the Merc treads here as well. No early enchantment though for the home guard in case he wants to TP in. So, and just great vision around the dragon from both teams right now. It's another situation where no one really wants to do that. 1300 gold as you can see from OQ. He's got a re recall, but he's very scared right now that if he does recall that they're going to potentially lose a dragon as they, everyone starts to group right there. At the very least, it, oh, that's a nice delay, oh, actually. yeah. And OQ is slightly low on mana, too, so he's not going to be just throwing out boomerang blades left and right whenever he wishes. Ku Tigers, they're already starting that dragon now. Najin did see that with the ward in River, but can they react fast enough for it? Looks like maybe they'll just try to go for a steal from afar, but very not likely that it's going to happen as we have Gragas on the side for Koo Tiger. So Najin Fire will actually just be content with trading the bottom tier one. Yeah, uh, that's, that that's basically two towers that they've gotten off that dragon because they did most of the damage on the last one and then yeah. took it down slowly over time. So the Tigers losing out on a bit of early gold here, but at least they will in the late game be able to force more team fights should they so choose. But I think that getting the early gold is really good for Najin because they're going to be very powerful in the mid game as it is. So having an advantage like that could see them to a nice win if they can actually stop the Tigers from taking this turret. The Corky Trinity Force Power Spike really going to work. They're going oh, and in. Najin's going in. Depth Charge on to Prey, and he has to flash out, but he's met with Duke as he comes in with the Twisted Advance. And Smash just going to have to bounce out of that fight, leaving Wisdom all alone. And Oki picks up a kill. There for Najin Ian Fire, Goon coming down the river to keep Kuro at bay. Just not a fight you want to take. Uh, you have to be able to poke right there, all inning with his Corky so early. And again, Duke just there on a hair trigger smeb, coming into lane, but not being anywhere close to being in that Meganar form. So a uh, lack of communication on these TP ganks allows Duke to respond so much better in this game, just like he did in the last one. It's not the end of the world, but they're not going to get the tower right now. Looks like no, I mean, the no objectives will be able to be taken by Najin, and the gold difference still pretty minor, all things considered, but a little bit of a win there for Najin as they come out of that fight two to zero. Yeah, nice little nudge for them, having had a slight lead before in gold. Now they can try to secure that. Kuro actually going in and forces the Spirit Rush as his teammates show up in mid lane. So the Koo Tigers trying to return the favor in mid. They should be able to bring it down pretty low, but Pure will come up in that lane. And so does Watch from the side. So the Koo Tigers will back off just briefly before they realize all five members are there and they will take that tier one in mid against Najin. And this is what they've always been so good at, is playing around Trinity Forest Corky. They can really even up the gold in terms of getting some of these outer turrets down. And that was a great group right there. They didn't really lose too much in terms of CS. Big wave now in the bottom side for Prey. And Smeb also sticking up even in terms of CS in spite of helping his teammate out there in the mid lane. So nice little adaptation from the Tigers coming from behind after losing from that team fight. But still a very even game. And looks like Kuro going for an Abyssal Scepter second. That is not an item that we typically see yeah. on Cassidy as a second item, but worried about the assassination potential. And here comes OQ. Yeah. They want to take this outer. Oh, OK. He actually tries Tower Aggro there, but has to use On the Hunt to disengage, make sure they don't want to get caught out. Of course, OQ also being a little bit behind his teammates. They don't want to risk getting caught by the explosive cast from Wisdom as the Gragas shows up in top lane. Najin still successfully took that tier one. Yeah, but now they have to be worried about being dove, that the Sivir ultimate is down, and Smeb is in that Meganar form, so it looks like they'll trade one for one in the end, and Kuro not really able to get to do that much right now besides maybe zone out anyone who's trying to defend the turret, and they're gonna still catch that wave at the bottom side. You can see Smeb already recalled, ready, to take this minion wave as Duke didn't have teleport and was just slowly pushing it up to not a large advantage right there. 
Yeah, the Abyssal Scepter on Kuro also going to help with his teammates quite a bit. Of course, all of them doing a decent amount of magic damage. Let's see. That pays off in the next team fight. Two minutes until the next dragon. The Kutegas are up two stacks to null against Najin. Now, this next dragon is may very well decide the course of this game right now, considering it's very important to both of these teams. And so Najin realizing that they do want to keep their pink wards, especially around this dragon. Uh, they had the earlier Rift Scuttler, but it will die out before the dragon spawns. Prey, after cleaning up the top lane, will also go back, buy a new item, and then join his teammates. Just gonna get that recurve bow to lead into Blade of the Ruined King. Okay, so, slow pushes have developed in the top and bottom side. Duke's TP will be up by the time the dragon is. Scuttle Crab will be down for both teams. Nice spell shield for OQ. Uh, Smev just trying to put down some harass onto Pure. He doesn't want to get caught aside from that, but he is going to turn into Meganar right here, so. Yeah, he'll have plenty of time to get his transformation yeah. back up, though, which is key, so it's a good time just to go ahead and use that right now and start to stack that Rage Bar back up after that 15 second cooldown is gone on the ability to transform it. Prey going to be able to take down this turret right now, so great pressure. I mean, this is good play from behind. Duke, however, Starting to be threatening up in that top side. Smeb is going to have to recall. He actually got his recall delayed by OQ right there. That's pretty important. And Kuro will be selected to clear out the minion wave before the turret can take too much damage. And he'll get a nice little burst of gold for himself. But Duke's not going to let up just yet, especially with that teleport now being ready for him. So Ku Tigers will have to make a bit of a decision as a dragon spawns here. Smeb is still on the bottom side of the map. Looks like he's going to go home and prep himself for a teleport back bottom, if not just to go defend that top tier two. Mm, he just hit Meganar again, so uh -oh. this isn't an ideal time to fight at all as Duke walks up, starts putting damage on the tower once again. So this is a good time for Najin to make an attempt. They have quite a few wards around the pit right now. They should be feeling very comfortable. They see Gorilla coming in from the jungle, so they know how many people are there right now. Watch, just gonna go in and out, setting up the tunnels there for ease of use. Uh, those should be erased relatively soon. Koo Tiger's actually not too concerned about those. Tunnels from Rek'Sai. And Duke now taking the chance to actually walk all the way back to Dragon and Smeb. Uh, not doing much, he's just gonna prep himself for a teleport back in. His rage isn't completely built up for that Meganar. Watch trying to come in for a smite battle against Wisdom. Who's gonna get it? Watch gets to Dragon and that tries to even up the Dragon stacks. And Najin and Fire is gonna look for an escape. Watch had those tunnels set up earlier, so he's just gonna get out. Smeb does dodge that depth charge with the black shield as he turns into Meganar, but a ninth dredge line from Pure is gonna be able to get him out of trouble as Goon gets the charm onto Wisdom 2 to deny that advance from the Ku Tigers. Yeah, really nice little steal right there from Najin Ku. Tried to all in on the dragon before they actually poke people down with the Corky, and now they're heading into the top side. Could this be a possible Baron bait here from the Tigers? They're going for the blue buff at the very least. There is the orb from Prey just to check that brush. They grab the blue buff, but not a whole lot else. So. Really important takeaway from Najin. Nobody actually committing and going to die. Great disengage. And Najin playing with a good deal of patience in this game. Now they're trying to take some wards around this Baron buff, or this Baron rather. And Watch is going to Void Rush up there to make sure that there aren't any shenanigans going on. Indeed, there are not. It would be very difficult with this team composition that the Tigers have to sneak a Baron at this early stage of the game. <laughs> Pray. Has that blue buff now for the Ku Tigers, and blue buff denied from Goon once again, so that hurts a little bit. But like you said, Najin's still pretty happy with how the recent events turned out for them in this game too. It's a huge relief off of them that they don't have to worry about that because they they can scale in this situation because that Sivir is going to be a much bigger threat in the late game than the Corky, so they should be pretty comfortable. And also just the burst from Kassadin. Yes, Kassadin does do a lot of burst damage, but if you itemize MR here, you're going to be very successful because of Corky's mixed damage. 
And you're not going to be too concerned about his physical damage in comparison to all of the magic damage coming out of that team. So I think that this is a really good opportunity for Najin just to take a step back that they got that dragon, wait this one out. As you can see, the Cowl's really starting to come into play. Frozen Heart already done for Duke as well, so. Yeah, it wouldn't really hurt for Najin to prioritize that MR, especially with all the poke coming in in the form of match damage from the Ku Tigers. And the Ku Tigers will keep the Najin at bay with all the poke, but they're not going to get too much damage down onto them, so Najin not too concerned themselves. They'll just back off for a couple seconds, and then regroup here in mid. Gorilla going back home for the Ku Tigers. And then charging right towards that mid lane back to join up for a possible team fight or to prepare himself at least. It looks like the Tigers may be going double lock it in this instance, lock it on the support as well. Instead of right. the more aggressive Zonia's Hourglass build that we occasionally see, I'm very concerned about having those shields playing defensively and making sure that they can weather the storm of the Ari burst. Not a whole lot of armor yet, and no Frozen Hearts to deal with this Sivir. Yeah, just, just a Randuins for Smeb. And Blade of the Ruin King finished for Prey, so even... Well, they're gonna try and bait this Baron and get Poke down, looks like. Yeah, Duke's not buying it too much, though, trying to take as much as he can with those saplings. He's pretty tanky, so he doesn't man mind, excuse me, taking a couple hits as he throws a sapling over the wall. That wave, the side wave control is so good for the Tigers at the moment. So at some point, somebody from Najin is actually going to have to go down there. Duke doesn't want to. He doesn't have TP at the moment. Yeah, so Ku Tigers are really trying to make the most of the situation. Setting things up. Worst case scenario, they get a lot of damage down onto the Tier 2. So what is this? Najin possibly looking to push down mid, but they realize Ku's all missing, so they head on over to the Baron pit. They realize Ku's not starting the Baron. So they'll just back so off again. So much CS is going to be lost, though, for Najin. Yeah. Uh, because the top lane isn't looking too pretty for them either. And Tigers have been doing a good job of just giving them the runaround in the mid lane, not even giving them the angle. There's the smite coming in to push them off. Oh. I see the Yom is used to disengage from Najin and Fire. Some wow, they, they have lost an enormous amount of CS in bottom. And they're still They've lost like the four lane. waves of CS, and they're going to lose even more in the top side. This is excellent wave control wow. from the Tigers. This is beautiful. They just transitioned right into a tier two at top, and Najin has to come in from behind to try to make something happen here. I mean, Ku can either face the fight themselves or turn around and disengage with the explosive cast. Wisdom prepared for that in the case of an emergency right over the wall. And after safety is secured by Smeb, the rest of the members of the Ku Tigers will all exit from the top lane. And now they'll go right back towards the Baron pit. I mean- Wow, this is fantastic play. This the is Tigers. An really dance. good, really good setup. Not just doing all they can, but without teleport, now we're gonna have the Baron going down. I don't know if they should start this. Yeah, Ku did take some damage. Kuro, notably being a little bit low, so they will have to disengage. It looks like maybe they got a little bit over eager for the Baron buff, but you know what? They still got the tier two in top. They got a lot of damage and CS lost against Najin they in the nearly bottom lane. Kill, yeah, they nearly killed the tier two in the bottom. They probably denied five or six waves overall, so that is a tremendous amount of gold and XP lost uh, for Najin, and it, it was a very, Intricate time. I mean, it's two kills at 32 minutes into this game. <laughs> this is what we get when we get Najin versus Najin. The good old times. The, the Najin off. <laughs> it's all about Windians. No one dies. <laughs> I love it. Six inhibitors down in the game. <laughs> Everyone stand at Twitch, base. Twitch chat hates it, but I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, it was definitely a very well planned out situation for the and, Ku and Tigers. And even then, they get back in time to go for this dragon right now, so the timing around the dragon's still good. Now they're gonna try and set up another push in the bottom side to see if they can get a tier two there as well. If they can get one wave there, it'll probably take it out at this stage. Yeah, so Kuro working his best to clear out that bottom wave and start the push, and then they'll kick off the Dragon too, and have that pressure in bottom lane and force Najin to choose. Najin has already made their choice, so they're just gonna try to go for the Dragon fight in front of the pit.
can watch go for another steal and maybe another disengage. A charm onto Wisdom forced him to take a lot of damage from the dragon. Watch comes in just in time to start that dragon fight. Bakuro blinks into the pit, and it is going to be Wisdom securing that dragon. Forces a flash out of Watch, and the Meganar comes out just in time for Smeb to make sure that Najin can't go for any trickery. That was really good rage management from Smeb right there to make sure that on the opportunity for the engage, it just didn't exist unless he wanted to get Nar ulted into that wall. Now Najin trying to take out these minion waves, and they have control, vision control over the Barons, and now Najin can actually <laughs> start baiting this. Oh, okay. yeah, Oh, and Smeb gets pulled in. He doesn't have Mega Nar right now. Black Shield used, and Prey actually has to go all the way out of the fight thanks to Death Charge, and Oki picks up a kill onto Smeb. Another twisted advance from Duke, and a triple knockback with his Arcane Smash. Prey also gets caught back. A triple kill for OQ. The game turns on its head as Najin puts pressure down the mid lane and walks towards Baron. It's like if you hide from the Tigers, they assume you're not there. It's like playing peekaboo with a baby. It's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're just not respecting the dude potential in all of these bushes. Uh, they had no vision, and now this should be an easy Baron for Najin. So after all that hard work of snaking their way around the map, it is all for naught as Najin successfully baits that Baron out and kills three members, five kills to zero, and that turret in the bot lane doesn't go down either. So still a close game, but it's gonna be a tough defense right here. Yeah, I mean, Smith literally just inched forward towards that brush. It was a great catch. I mean, they were prepared for it. They landed the dredge line straight into the Sivir ultimate, but you have to respect, again, the movement and the pick potential of Najat's composition is absolutely massive, and Prey, Nailed by a charm right there, it looked like, at the yeah. end. Well played by Najin. And now with the Baron buff, they're going to put the pressure on themselves here in the mid lane. Righteous Glory popped by Duke to pressure all of Ku Tigers out. He actually chases Prey all the way down into the inhibitor turret with that black shield on him. I don't know if they're going to be able to take much more than this, however. There are pings going down onto the side lanes, but the wave's not in their favor, at least for the moment. So that should buy the Tigers some amount of time. And they're just gonna split push right now, Duke with the TP up, so they're gonna take as much as they can. Yeah, this top tier two is already at half health, so it looks like Okia and Goong should be able to take it down right away in favor of Najin. They won't pressure the inhibitor anymore, no need to, especially with Duke pushing down that bottom lane, so all of Najin now rotating back down bottom. And the Ku Tigers will have to spawn appropriately. Now this one's at full health, can the Tigers keep it safe? But they can't all leave, because then the pressure in the mid lane will continue. So one, some of them going down one by one to ensure that Najin is also all there. They're not missing out on too much in the mid lane. Nice dark binding onto Goom will stop from Goom putting out too much poke before the minion wave gets there. Yeah, yeah. At this point too, I mean, if Najin can buy a banner of command, it the, their siege is really going to be almost unstoppable from the Tigers considering that they're so reliant on that magic damage to clear out the minions. Yeah, another turret down, that's three towers now that Najin took off that Baron and they jump out for to a 4K lead after having nothing really before that last fight. Now, I don't know if they're actually gonna be able to crack the base right here. They've got a great composition for diving, but they haven't actually spent the money that they acquired during that quick takedown of the tier two turrets. So yeah, they're still effectively even besides that Baron buff. They need to go back and purchase before they can reliably and safely dive. And the Baron buff going to be ending here soon after for Najin. So the Ku Tigers will have some breathing room. Their inhibitors are still safe behind their towers. And we'll see them try to farm back into the game. Well, they can still punish with the dragons at the very least. Yes, so three stacks to one in favor of Ku. By the time that dragon comes up, the Baron buff will be off, so at least it'll be a more even fight in that regard. 401 Sivir for OQ though. He's been doing a lot of work. OQ hasn't had any OQ moments tonight. I know, it's yeah. very impressive. <laughs> Maybe they finally fixed it. We say that today. Oh, watch. Not able to get over that wall while we're talking about OQ. But OQ has been playing quite well in today's matches. Bump the wolf right back into the barrel. The plays, the mechanics from Wisdom. 
just no kills from the Tigers yet. I mean, they weren't really set up to get a lot of kills, I think, early on with this composition, but they've just been mechanically outfought by Najin yeah. in the two games tonight. And you can see how intelligent they are at when and where to apply pressure, but it doesn't make a whole lot of difference if Najin is just able to roll over you in some of these team fights that we've seen happen. So trying to get some control over the Dragon now. 30 seconds left. Yeah, uh, it's a slow process, and Najin is clearing out wards and making sure that they keep that nice and dark because that is the weakness of the Tigers. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Najin, are they going to hide in this brush again? Some of them are trying to uh, bait the Ku Tigers into face checking brushes once again. Not going to happen just yet. But again, like you said, Najin does it. How does that even happen? You have barrels, you have corky rockets. <laughs> There's really no excuse for this team There's no excuse for this team comp for doing that. And Najin should be able to take a quick dragon for themselves, trying to even up the stacks. Two to three, still in favor of Ku for the dragons, but a decent goal lead for Najin. Baron is up in two minutes, though, so the Ku Tiger is starting to set up some vision around that side of the map. But it's going to be really hard for them to get it. I mean, just how fast Najin can close the gap with this team. And again, what is what exactly is this Kassadin going to do here? I uh, can't actually deal any damage to Goong because Goong is going to be moving too quickly. And then you have a spell shield, and, and the Maokai and Nautilus are so good at dealing with Kassadin. So Kuro Aha. actually the needs answer to be is the this. <laughs> Their own baits. But Najin should be pretty aware of it. This Tons of things going around. Oh, oh, look at that. Najin giving the answer to Ku Tigers. This is what you do when your enemy is not seen. So what Kuro can do is check the brushes for the Tigers by jumping in <laughs> and then Zonia's if they're there. So like, many options. Alert, ring the alarm. <laughs> Ding, <laughs> they're here. <laughs> I hope we see that. That would be a <laughs> crowning achievement on their face checking this evening. Well, the game still uh, could be far from over. It could also end in a moment's notice if either team loses a massive team fight. I, I mean, the Ku Tigers, they have to get a really huge pick. That's the, that's the way they get back into this one. But with how fast Najin can respond with this team composition, it's just so unlikely. And uh, Kuro still, like, with all the MR and the enemy team, he has no Void Staff yet. So he's not even going to be able to burst somebody particularly efficiently. That's true. And you have two Righteous Glories as well as Sivirol. I mean, this is ridiculous for Najin right now. They're in a perfect place. Yeah, well, the one hope for the Ku Tigers is that there is OQ on the other team, although he's been playing <laughs> very consistently today. And Najin putting on a lot of pressure, and Wisdom actually going in for a slight trade on to watch, but. Ku Tigers look a little bit dispersed. They have to refocus here as Najin continues to put out poke from the side, and there's no vision in that brush. Don't put a rocket in there, whatever you do. Uh, the danger's there for the Ku Tigers. Ah, okay. But the next brush, it's still dark. Well, they've seen enough people that yeah. they have an idea that. I, I, I would hope trouble. they don't make the same mistakes three times in a row. Uh, the side lanes are, or at least the top lane is pushing quite a bit in favor of Najin, so Ku, uh, okay, well, watch, went back home, but of course he has his ultimate, and again, like we said, the Ku Tigers can't exactly finish that Baron oh, in They want to engage right now while Kassadin's in the top side. There's the glory. Oh, and Pure running up, but he had to dodge the Dark Binding, so nice job by Gorilla keeping them zoned out. So we're back to the same dance here, waiting for one misstep from either side. Kuro will be rejoining his team, just clearing that big wave once. Doesn't have the time or the leisure to push up another wave to secure a much bigger wave in favor of the Ku Tigers in top. Bottom side is forming way in favor of Ku Tigers, so they just need a little bit more time to use that as pressure. That tier two was pushed down pretty hard earlier, so if the Ku Tigers can wait this out, uh, they could try to get a good choice uh, here out of Najin. I think Najin should just commit and dive in the mid lane right now. That's what I would do. Well, looks like they're setting up for that. 
Well, they got the vision control back on the Baron, so maybe they can bait it right now, but I think put, putting together this a stronger siege with their composition and trying to force the issue be pretty effective. All right, no vision in the Baron pit for the Ku Tigers. Not even around it at this point. Duke's going to have to go deal with that bottom lane at some point. It's just Tigers trying to play this as patiently as they yeah. possibly can. Yeah, the Tigers are being very patient. Now that's a good thing. There's a black shield jumping forward just for a little bit of poke, but not going to really connect against members of Najin. And the Ku Tigers trying to keep Najin at bay while they try to shove up the mid lane and the bottom lane together. This isn't allowing Duke to go deal with that. And Spam almost turning into Meganar. Is he going to jump in? They do get a lot of damage onto Duke, and that's going to force Najin to disengage. Nice dark binding onto Duke and the body slam. Tons of damage going in. Black Shield, and that's going to allow Kuro to jump in and finish off that Maokai. Goong has to spirit rush out, but Kuro's going to continue chasing Goong below half health. And the Ku Tigers might have found a window to go get that Baron while the bottom lane is pushing up. And Najin looked like they could have just easily gone in on that, but Duke got isolated in the river and they didn't want to commit to turning around onto that fight. Now the tier two is going to go down. They send Duke down there. They're just going to give up the Baron. Wow. Well, really good No, no one actually wants to win this game. <laughs> That's what I've decided. <laughs> Well, the Ku Tigers did make a very good decision after noticing how much damage they did do to Duke and the fact that Duke was left behind so much during that little poke phase that they could go in and eliminate him right away. Yeah, I wish we had seen the, the start of that one again, but look how separated Najin is. I mean, they're on, they were behind three different walls right there instead of being together to turn that one around. Sure, they're worried about the Meganar, but with the kind of advantage that they had, it seems like they could have at least tried to fight that a little bit more straight up. Yeah, Wisdom also with a really good explosive cast, bringing the Maokai closer to himself, even if that's further from his teammates, because that's also further away from the rest of Najin. Secures that kill. There's Dragon number four Tigers. as well, and there's not really anything that Najin can do about it. So the unwillingness to, to get into that fight and how they split up upon seeing that Gnar about to transform means that that pick is now being turned into a tower, a baron, and a dragon that puts the Tigers on the doorstep of number five. And that's a pretty big threat, and the Ku Tigers should be able to use that to their advantage in forcing certain choices out of Najin the next time Dragon spawns. Ku still has that dragon buff, or baron buff rather, so they're trying to pressure out this mid lane with the help of the buffed up minions and their newly found dragon buff. Uh, but lots of wave players still coming out from Notch, and they're not in too much of a threat yet. The next wave will be the big test, as all members of Ku Tigers are here, putting out poke against Najin. They have to be so careful. Double glory. Kassadin's not there. They're not splitting with the Gnar. So Kassadin now trying to rejoin as they attempt to zone people off. So I'm just going to play it safe, back off right to their inhibitor turret, and that evens us up in terms of towers and just dead even in terms of gold as well. Yeah. This has been a very close game all throughout. 45 minutes in, these are when the mistakes are really going to start to matter. Wisdom just sitting in a ward. Uh, he will get caught out by Goon, so he's just going to back off from that one. As they continue to pressure that inhibitor turn, looks like Ku Tigers will get this. They'll be the first one to open up an inhibitor right for the taking, and Ku Tigers will start to beat down on it. They will take that middle inhibitor. Najin. Letting go of a lot of these objectives. The Tigers have been playing the round Nars Rage incredibly well this game. Every time they make a pressure play, it's right up when Smeb is about to transform, and it's really scaring Najin because they don't want to be on the front line when that happens for obvious yeah. reasons. But I think they're playing too cautiously. Well, yeah, now there's no Mega Nars, so they jump onto Spen. He's not going to get denied from that hop, and a three man knockup coming in from Wash. And Goon picks up the kill right on Spen. Prey has to back out, but he's taking a lot of damage. There's a stummer to heal. He's still trying to kite with his missiles, and there's a boomerang blade. Not going to get the kill on Gorilla just yet. Wisdom has that black shield on him. Watch chasing after. The Ku Tigers all have to back out safely here if they want to defend their own base, and the Dark Binding will help, and Kuro actually drawing a lot of attention out towards the mid lane. So Smep getting too far up there when he had no chance of turning into the Meganar, and Najin taking advantage of that. 
picks him off nearly immediately, but there's nothing to take left on the map. I mean, sure, they're going to get some farm, but the Super Minion Waves already in their base. They can't push out. They can't take an inhibitor of their own. The Waves are not in the right place. So one kill is the only reward they are going to receive. Besides maybe holding on to that inhibitor turret on the bottom side for a little bit longer, Prey rolling through and taking a heap of CS right here. You know, I was really about to say, as soon as you mentioned how well the Koop Tigers were playing around Naris Rage, I was like, except for now, <laughs> since his Mega Nars down, <laughs> he just gets caught. I'm like, oh, there, there he goes. <laughs> Same advantage that Najin wanted to find, and they got it. So, Baron Buff's going to be expiring, and again, obviously still anybody's game right here. If Koop can come out with another dragon, it will be pretty clutch. They, well, that's the scary thing too about that next dragon is the true damage poke coming in from Porky is going to be really difficult for Najin to actually hold a turret against. That's true. Now, Duke and Watch also both have Thorn Mail to make sure that if they stick on to that Corky, that Corky can't even think about kiting and simply has to either run or die. Well, same with Wisdom and Smeb, right? So, it's true. Oh, and there's a Righteous Glory, and on the hunt, and Pure goes in, but he took way too much damage. Prey backs out with the Black Shield, is not affected by the Death Charge, but Kuro gets caught a little bit too deep. He's trying to use the shield to stay alive, and he's going to blink out just in time once again. And Smeb is in Mega Nar form. Duke gets stunned, and Prey comes back in for the damage on to Duke. They take him out, 76 seconds down for Duke. For Najini and Fire, Wisdom up front with a lot of health. Smeb standing behind with some poke and Prey just the buy for that option and watch gets stunned into the wall. But a single man Mega Nar ult not gonna do much. Everyone on the Koo Tiger is pretty low as Oku is still at full health. They're gonna have to back out. Uh, he's gonna be up though with teleport by the time the dragon arrives. So we can expect to see another fight right there. Dragon and Baron on nearly the same timer because that dragon was taken one minute after that Baron. So Duke goes down again, having trouble staying alive as he starts to stack up a little bit more magic resist right there, but it's gonna be a little bit rough for him. I know how this goes, Monty. How does I it go? I cast these high intense team fights about five more times with only one death. So they try to go right now because they see that Smeb isn't available, but Kuro actually nearly kills Pure right off the bat, and they just can't quite lock down Kuro as he escapes with that rift walk and Duke follows up with a twisted advance, but the kiting is so good from the Koo Tigers. I mean, kiting has been their specialty with this Corky for a long time right now. Pure drops the E, and there's the binding on to watch. They try and burn him down, but just too much damage coming off of OQ and Goom. Wisdom has to get out of there. And so many low members on the Tigers, but no actual kills. Smith managing to get his Rage Bar high enough in that to turn things around just a little bit, but only a single kill again, no objectives taken. And at this late stage of the game, one super minion wave isn't really going to do a whole lot, so Najin easily able to keep presence in the middle of the map. And we're all back to normal with all spells available. There's another good black shield onto Smeb, and Wisdom tries to come in from the side, but he's actually gonna get caught out. The Koo Tigers have to back up, but Goon going in onto Prey, and there comes the ultimate from Gorilla. It's gonna give Prey time to escape, and a nice Mega Nar onto onto Goon, and Goon goes down to Prey with another missile and a phosphorus bomb as Watch gets caught out. Double kill for Prey, he's still kiting from afar. Duke gets slowed down, Another stun from Smeb, and that's a kill for Kuro with a nice body slam onto OQ, a double kill, and an ace for Koo Tigers. Wow, what great kiting coming in, and that black shield was so crucial because it gave Smeb time just to get into that Mega Nar form, and this will be a win for the Tigers as they charge wow. forward. They have to take out the inhibitor, inhibitor, inhibitor. <laughs> there you go. So I was like, oh, already taking these turrets. <laughs> Paying attention, but that's going to be it. So a really impressive come from behind win for the Tigers based off of their strength, their kiting, but man, did it look dicey for a while. Well, well played by the Koo Tigers. They really focused hard towards that mid game, making those intricate dances work in favor for their style and bringing this to a series against Najin the Empire. Yeah, still, I mean, Najin played that pretty well for most of the game and a lot of those dragons uh, giving the Tigers the pressure they needed to take this one. But man, they have to be so much more careful. It's like the Tigers put themselves in this position where they have to just play, have this great shot calling to get objectives back on the map in order to win the game. And you don't want to have to put yourself on the line like that.
Yeah, OQ. I mean, most members of Najin actually, that last fight being their one death, costing them the game at 52 minutes and 40 seconds. A patient game played out by the Koo Tigers. Yes, indeed. And Kuro getting that Void Staff and 